Who names a snake Fuzzy? Me. Ah, it's amazing. Anyway, Fuzzy's my new friend that I got for pre-ordering Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie Dow. So I just wanted to put Fuzzy in this video because I can. <laughs> Hi, friends. Hello. <laughs> this is like the most random video, I'm sorry. Hi friends! So today we are doing our September book haul and remember last month when I was like, oh yay, I didn't buy any books this month. Yeah, no, this month was just like, whee! So you're gonna see that eventually, but we are gonna start by showing you stuff that we got from the publishers. So I guess I'll go first. Uh, one of the things I got, which I decided to keep, is a little house picture book treasury, which is six oh. stories of life on the prairie, and obviously Laura six Ingalls Wilder. Six stories of life on the prairie. Uh, fun fact about me, when I was little, the little house series was my absolute oh, that favorite prairie. of all okay. time. Because I was like, prairies in general. I, just, I, I love it so much. So this picture book is just like stories. I think a lot of them are stories that were already told, but they the have publishers actually that. gave this to you. Yeah, That's so awesome. it's amazing. Um, I'm really excited about it. Yes, I know that there are probably things about the series. Reading it as an adult has definitely shown me that, but I still harbor such nostalgic feelings for it, so happy to have this. I will now start with the most recent thing I got in the mail. Uh, the uh, the fifth book of the Alcatraz series uh, by Brandon Sanders, uh, Brandon Sanderson, a tour. I, I, I heard like about the rights and decided to publish the fifth book and it has republished the other, uh, the first four books that came to it, uh, that, that came in the series, and I am really excited to get my hands on absolutely everything and binge read it, so. It does sound like something that's right up his alley. Versus evil li librarians. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay, next I have Going Into Town, A Love Letter to New York by Roz Chast, and it is basically a book that is a memoir about Ross Chast's experience in Manhattan. So it sounds like fun. I haven't read it yet, but I love New York. Maggie loves New York. So this should be a fun thing to experience. And I think there are a couple of pages you can actually color yourself, which is amazing. We actually saw Levi Black at um, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. at uh, BookNet Fest. And uh, it's super cool. He gave some great advice about, you know, don't let the trends, like whatever, just write what you are, what you want. And it's because of my vampires. And I'm very, very interested in seeing vampires that don't sparkle and aren't love interests anymore, or aren't just mindless, crazy, creep, creepy don't crawlies. Sparkle. With... I'm sorry, that part was like... It's just, you know, I, hey, I read Say Breaking Dawn, so it's not about the hate. It's just I'm, I'm I think I'm okay. I'm, I'm up to here with like. I think that's the limit of my sparkly we're vampire. Good. We're good. Like, we're like we're good with the sparkly love interest vampires. Now we just want to you know like to have the whole kind of army of the undead and maybe some of them are good kind of deal. So army of the that. undead. Mine is, next one is Last Star Burning by Caitlin Sangster and oh my gosh look at that cover. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's basically the story of if I remember correctly, it is a girl who gets invited by a famous explorer to accompany him on this crazy expedition. And her sister is her main competition because she also ends up wanting to go and do this expedition, but with someone else. And yeah, so sounds really interesting. I don't know much more about it, but I am looking forward to checking it out. Uh, as the resident horror um, uh, correspondent on Yield Book Blog, I am uh, the, this is the last harvest. Um, don't really know much else about it, uh, about uh, It just sounds like someone is trying to call I plead humans. the blood. Those are the last words of a 17 year old golden boy quarterback, Clay Tate, hearing rattling uh, from his dad's throat when he discovered him dying on the barn floor of the Neely Cattle Ranch, clutching a crucifix to his chest. Uh, so. Creepy. I know, awesome. So can't, can't wait to read that. So next I have I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. This is the special edition that Wednesday Books is releasing this year with a foreword by Jenny Han. And this is a classic about a girl named Cassandra who basically wants to be a writer and so has been chronicling her family's ups and downs in their life over the course of a year. And it's so good. I finally got a chance to read it earlier this year. Really enjoyed it. Really think this is a beautiful edition and so worth getting. Rounding up my um, horror books that we got from publishers, this is Hex. It's a small kind of little southern town, uh, but there's like a 17th century woman with her eyes and her mouth sewn shut, walking around all over the place that everyone's ignoring as part of the curse, the Hex, so to speak. Um, that's like I'm ridiculously so creepy. I'm so excited to read this book. It's, I'm just uh, like disturbed. That Stephen King calls it totally brilliant and original, and uh, George R. R. Martin calls it creepy and gripping. Sold. Fierce Reed sent over a package, and uh, one of the books in it was In Her Skin by Kim Savage. And in this one, there is a girl who takes on a con and she impersonates a missing girl. So, that's all I know about that. 
So Alexa got this in the mail. It's called Nowhere Girls. I'd actually gotten a copy at Comic Con and no Comic Con. I've actually got I actually got a copy at BEA, and uh, and this one just came in the mail. My review before it is actually coming up soon, and it's a really heavy book. Even if it's written in a very kind of uh, casual tone, uh, it's about a bunch of girls who decide to get you know, clap back against rape culture, and. It, and they don't, you know, um, skip on the details here. It's not overindulgent and um, exploitative even, but this is, no punches are pulled when we're talking rape culture. We're talking the whole gamut of it and a bunch of girls who are like saying, this is enough, we draw the line here and this is what we're gonna do about it. So it's very empowering. It's almost an urban fairy tale because what are the odds of everybody just magically coming together like that? But it is a cautionary tale. And so uh, you'll probably hear more about it at my, uh, at our um, wrap up. Wrap up. Next book in the Fear Streets package was You Won't Know I'm Gone by Kristen Orlando. This is actually a sequel and I read the first one. This is a sequel to You Don't Know My Name and it's a spy book. The girl in it has two parents who are spies and she's also grown up being a spy and something happens in the first book that triggers the events in the second book. Vague, I know, but second book. <laughs> Alexa also got this in the mail, although we had received this, how many, what was the first one? Yeah, we got this. Yeah, we got this B A, and then she received this in the mail. I'm also slated to read it, I haven't read it yet, but it's called Beasts Made of Night. Uh, seems like a very kind of dramatic uh, It's a Nigerian-inspired in fantasy, I want to say. In which case, I've, I've been having so much fun with Akata Witch and, and every, anything Nadia Okora for, so um, might be a good uh, addition to the TBR. Suitors and Sabotage by Cindy Anstey, which has a really pretty cover. Uh, it's historical romance YA style, which I think sounds really fun. Uh, Alexa got this in the mail. It's called The Hanging Girl. It came with a couple of tarot cards. Uh, the Five of Cups and the Queen of Wands. Uh, I don't know if they're actually delving into the Rider White actual kind of translations of it. It's, if this is a spoiler or not, I wouldn't know. But it's about a girl who uh, they're hoping can use her psychic skills to track down somebody missing. Pretty excited to watch it. Read it. Pretty excited to read it. The Beloved Wild by Melissa Ostrom. And this is historical fiction. And it sounds like this is a girl who does not want to get married to like her the person that her mother or father thinks she should marry and so she decides to go with her brother when he journeys out west. Obviously, at the time, it wasn't really safe for most women to go if they weren't married or, you know, with their families, so she disguised herself as a boy. Mean Girls. He's such a good human. The mean Girls, uh, of course. They novelized the Of movie, course basically. I'm gonna try to read this. I mean... I love how pink and sparkly it is. It's magnificent, I swear to God. So, love this, love this, love Tina Fey. And if you haven't watched the movie, Go watch it. Then we have In Search Of by Ava Delara, which is the thing I was most excited about in the package I got for Fear Shades. And it's, um, it's a story about two generations of people in search of a variety of things. And that's basically all I remember about it. Okay, so sci-fi now. Free Fall is what this book is called. I saw this cover and I was like, he needs to read. I know, and it's it's well deep into the sci-fi thing where people want to get off planet because of all of the injustice and the unfairness and all of that stuff. And when somebody finally gets to do that, they wake up thousands of years later on an unknown planet uh, and totally off course. So how do we survive that? I guess we'll find out. Next we have Blood and Sand by C.V. Wick, which I also think Maki might actually want to read. So it's basically the entire concept of this book centers around the idea of what if Spartacus was a girl. and. Obviously, so just just need it. Middle grade time, uh, FIB, uh, book two, the unbelievable FIB, uh, over the underworld. So I guess it's a uh, book two in a series about P uh, Norse characters and Vikings and gods and all that stuff. And uh, kind of want to know what the first book's all about. You'll look that up in the New York Public Library and then link the two and see how that goes. Next is a book called The Twelve Dares of Krista by Marissa Burt, and I had no idea what this one was about but the concept of it is pretty cute. It's about a girl named Cresta and her parents um, are getting divorced and this kind of messes with her holiday spirit because she's always loved the holidays. But especially when her mom's like, oh, we're gonna go to Europe this year instead of like staying and doing the holidays. Um, yeah, what happens is her dad sends her a surprise package and it, it is waiting for her at her hotel in Italy and it's basically 12 dares that she has to do and I think that sounds really fun. This book that Alexa got in the mail, I really feel I'm gonna enjoy like so much. It's about a little girl who discovers that she has chimera DNA and she get and when that kicks in, genetically, she gets shipped off to a, super, uh, to a private school where there's other kids with different sizes, shapes, colors, appendages. 
Yeah. Appendages. <laughs> Appendages. I'm so excited. Um, and and of course, really right. and all this has in the back is oh, so you think normal is something to be proud of? Now I don't like. I mean, I have problems with that statement because come on, man. The normal. I mean, everybody What's be brand normal. Nor that's just a reversal of tables. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's just you know you turning the tables on there. But I get it. I do because I was the weird one forever. So I'm very excited to see where, where this comes from. Just Dance by Patricia McLaughlin. It is the only reason I kept this one. I have no idea what it's about. But it's because of the author I'm very familiar with. I used to reread Sarah Plain and Tall all the time when I was little, so you'll see what I think of this one. I'm only reading this because this is called Bound to You. Now, for those of you who've seen me on this channel, I am not doing uh, uh, paranormal YA. Like, that's not my deal. I don't want to do this. However, Megan Ross has been waiting her whole life for her mate to come and sweep her off her feet, but the wolf she meets on the beach is not the sweet, gentle boy she's been dreaming of. So she wants the golden retriever werewolf, but instead gets something else. I'm in. I want to see what happens to this. Next is Wait For Me by Anna, and this book is about a girl who... She seems like the perfect god on the outside, but when she meets this boy, she finds herself questioning everything and really trying to decide what it is that she wants. It's really short, which was surprising, but I am very intrigued. How to Disappear. Uh, I, again, I, I do contemporary, but maybe not necessarily the romantic contemporary type, uh, type stuff. And uh, this looks like something uh, right up my alley. It's about a girl who d decides to, kind of, she's not the most famous kid, but she decides to kind of Photoshop herself into other people's pictures. And that's already creepy and semi-dear Evan Hansen-esque, right? Only instead of making lies about somebody who died, it's just making lies about people who are alive and that you're kind of like... Interesting, but creepy. So let's see how that turns out. Everything Must Go by Jenny Fran Davis. I'm just gonna read you the back because this is what sold me on it. Dear reader, when I was 16, I traded my prep school in Manhattan for an alternative Quaker boarding school in upstate New York's Hudson River Valley. Why, you ask? To make Elijah Huck, a feminist fashion photographer, love me. As is usually the case when one follows an unconventional path to love, I was in for a few surprises. Love, Flora. That just sounds like the most fun slash crazy premise, and I think I'm gonna really enjoy this one. I'm just gonna read the, this is called The Art of Feeling, because, right? Uh, <laughs> I heard it because, right? <laughs> so much like subtext there, if you even knew what we what were like in like real life. But um, is it better to feel everything or nothing at all? Oh jeez. And so Samantha Herring has been in constant pain, not from a lingering leg injury, but also from, not only from a lingering leg, leg injury, but also from her mother's death, which has devastated her family. But then, um, you know, Sam meets Elliot, a reckless loner with a carefree attitude and has an amazing secret, he can't feel any pain. Now, I want to know if that's like, I know, I like metaphorical or like, if that's like a nerve ending condition. Uh, so uh, we'll see if that uh, actually makes it to the top of the pile, if at all. So I normally don't keep the boxes like that things come in, but I will make an exception for this because it's pretty. Renegades by Marissa Meyer. They sent this really cool package. Um, yeah, so it says choose your side and the arc is in the middle. This is the arc of renegades and then there are pins if you pick an anarchist and pins if you pick the renegades and you know me, I love pins so I'm so happy about that. Anyway, Renegades is a superhero YA by Marissa Meyer and it's basically got two sides, the anarchists and the renegades. The renegades are your typical superheroes who so cool. are willing to do whatever they need to do to help everyone in the world and the anarchists are both villains and people who simply question the way things are run. So it's really, really good, you guys. I really enjoyed it. I'm still angry about how it ends because then I have to wait until next year to get the next one, so. I will. It was good, though. It was good. All right, moving right along, we have books we bought. And I guess I can start with the stuff that, there was this one crappy day. I've been having a very crappy month in general because work has been a bit overwhelming and stuff like that. So there was this one crappy day when I was like, I'm gonna meet you at the Strand and I tell Maggie this. And while I was there, I ended up finding like a shit ton of fairy tale books and I collect fairy tale books. So Maggie had to like, separate them into piles for me so I would I to, I'm like the screening process of we can definitely get this maybe not this etc yeah. etc cetera, et cetera. so the first one that we ended up getting was Green Willow and other Japanese fairy tales by Grace James with only illustrations still don't by have... Warwick uh, Goble only because we don't have Japanese fairy tales exactly yet. and it's just a perfect addition because we both really love Japan first of all and we have we, lo we have a lot of love for things that are Japanese not just anime but you know in general yeah. I, I was thinking food, actually but you know 
Ah, the food. Anyway, so we wanted to add this to our shelves. I feel like we'd be able to draw inspiration from it once we crack it open and start reading a couple of the fairy tales, so I think that's really great. Agreed. Um, I also ended up getting this edition of Hans Christian Andersen's Fairy Tales, which is illustrated by Michael Foreman and translated by Brian Alderson. This actually matches an edition of the Grimm's Fairy Tales that I own, which is why we got it as well. I'm telling you, man, my head canon of the Grimm's, like the TV Grimm's, and then the Andersons. The Grimm's handle the, the monsters, the Andersons handle the Fae. This is The Annotated Secret Garden, which obviously the original book is by Frances Hodgson Burnett, and this has a foreword and notes by Gretchen holbrook Garzina. And the reason we got this was because we both really love The Secret Garden, that's one, and I think it would just be cool to see someone else's notes and thoughts on it, and um, you know, historical context, the author's life's context, I mean, there's a bunch of things. Mm. And plus, this is a great addition to our Francis Hodgson Burnett, which collection. is really only the Secret Garden. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Uh, which, by the way, I do need to buy like a uh, little Lord Fauntleroy I've at never read some it. point in time because come on, you're gonna want to get the whole set, right? <laughs> and then I saw this, and I was like, we need it because I need this to research my next book. Okay, I have been trying to write a Swan Lake book for like ever three, four years now. It's it's really hard because I keep coming up with different concepts. That's forever in and New York just, time. Like fall. Oh, apart. So anyway, we got A Kingdom Far and Clear, which is the complete Swan Lake trilogy, and it's Mark Helprin and illustrated by Chris Van Alsberg, and I'm so excited about this. You have no idea, because I need it. <laughs> First of all, I just love the Swan Lake story. Um, second, I think it would be also helpful for me while I'm trying to hammer out how this story needs to be written. Yeah. Can you sense the bitterness there? There's a lot of bitterness there, enough to make some coffee. So I was also having a really crappy month, as you know, so I ended up getting some of the Barnes & Noble leather-bound classics editions. They're all like nine bucks, which is like shocking to me because they're so pretty. Uh, first is a pretty edition of Grimm's Fairy Tales for our collection. Second is Heidi by Joanna Spivey, which look at this cover, it's so cute! I remember reading Heidi. Third was King Arthur and His Knights by Howard Pyle, and it also has a really mega awesome cover. Wow. And the last, which is the most elusive because they no longer sell this online, so I was like, I need to find it. It took me like two In which different case trips. She found it. Uh, and the Little Mermaid and Other Fairy Tales by Hans Christian Andersen, and it's such a beautiful edition. So, yeah, a bunch of new additions to all of my shelves there. So Mackie and I and my friend Rachel, uh, we all went to the Lee Bardugo tour event for Wonder Woman Warbringer and she was in conversation with Daniel Jose Older. So we got two books. Wonder Woman Warbringer, obviously, and, and Shadow, Shadow Shaper. Shaper. Because Daniel was actually super cool, like as a human being in general. Like yeah, he's one of he's the better great. He's one of the better people on the planet. Um, but uh, he he was also kind enough to sit down and kind of sign uh, some of the for, yeah, for, for the people who really were there. Cool. So you got Lee on on one side and you got Daniel on the other, and I'm just like, yeah, we're gonna get some of that. And so she, Alexa got Warbringer, I got Warbringer for a friend of mine, and I got Shadow Shaper for us because I think it's really super cool. Obviously a Wonder Woman story, but this is Wonder Woman teen years, I want to say. Teen years. Uh, it's its own continuity ish. You can sort of make it work with what's on t with, 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 what's in the movies, but uh, a lot of people have problems. Uh, I, I find with that, but it's a great story. It's and it's, it's, I'll read it. it. It's a great addition to the Wonder Woman canon. Uh, well, not canon, but the Wonder world. Woman like world. Yeah. It's really good. It's really Wonder really Woman good. universe. I had a few things I ordered this month. One of them was Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor, illustrated by Jim DeBartolo. This is a novella that actually came out as an ebook before, and I read it, and it is about two of the secondary characters in her Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. It's about the first date that Susanna and Mick go on, and it's so adorable, and I just love the colors, and let's just, you know, take a moment to appreciate that, you know, the cover has that. Oh, hey. The back cover has that. Hey. It's just like so beautifully packaged, and I am super excited that it actually exists as an actual book now. Well, I rounded up the co the, the Mercedes Lackey collection Huzzah. of Valdemar of the Valdemar kind of world, and I finally got the Arrows books. Thank you, eBay. Uh, and uh, that should complete the series now that we can should binge read in the next few months. It's Your Name. This is the light novel uh, by Makoto Shinkai. And if you guys don't know what Your Name or Kimi no Nawa is, it is this fantastic movie that came out that is like sci-fi and fancy and love story all rolled into one. And it's just, I can't. I just read the back of this book and I have a lot of feelings. 
uh, we can do an entire post on this, but we I am literally but this is, ready. And 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 JJ Abrams is gonna uh, says that he wants to kind of turn it into. I still don't know how I feel about that. I'm not well, excited. Consider, considering that the batting average for uh, Japanese, you know, animated films being turned into American kind of. I just don't want things, them to ruin such a good. Thing. Well, you, you know, the batting average isn't so great. I mean, with the recent Hullabaloo with Death Note and all of that oh, stuff, goodness. right? So without any hate. There, you know, there are a lot of things that get lost in translation when you try to move that's, it over. That's how I feel. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, save yourself the time before the J.J. Abrams whenever please, it comes please out. Please watch the original. Watch the original or, or read the book. Should be okay. Uh, but again, it's hard to translate what was initially created as something visual, meaning. Uh, they put it on you to describe it. Uh, it sorry, but they put it on you to actually see it and then work with it and then suddenly it's your imagination So yeah. it's a little difficult, but we highly recommend mm. watching Kim in an hour. My pre-order of God's Grave by J. Christoph Cummins And this is the second book in the Nevernight Chronicles And I just want to know what happens to Mia after her stint at Assassin's School So can't wait to read this. Shout out to Kristen and hello Andrew. Hi. Hello. Hello, Andrew uh, Yeah, I wanted to say hi to those Two lovely lovebirds two of my favorite people. Uh, who have decided to, and mostly Kristen, who have decided to part with their copy. <laughs> like, like, well, I'm pretty sure Andrew would have been cool if, if Kristen was like, "Hey, can we give Mackie and Alexa these books?" And I'm pretty sure Andrew would go, "Yeah, totally." But um, but even if he wasn't involved in the process of, of deciding what to do with these, this is Peter and the Starcatcher, mm -hmm. the series. I'm excited about this. Kristen so loves that too. I appreciate it uh, because I'm also the middle grade kind of reader on the. Ever. I know Kristen loves those books, so. So these will be these these will find a very good home with us. So thank you, Kristen. Okay, I have *The Language of Thorns* by Lee Bardugo, and this is a set of fairy tales set in the Grisha world, and it was so good. I loved it so much. The last story, *When Water Sang Fire*, is my absolute favorite. So you guys have to get it because it's so good. Now for my library haul. So for the last three videos, <laughs> I have so been sorry. talking about. I can't. I've been <laughs> talking about uh, *Red Queen*. And uh, behold, he has everything from the from our local library. In which Glass case, sword, I did Glass King's Sword, Cage. King's Cage, and apparently Cruel Crown is one of those kind of prequely type deals. There were or there were or there were two novellas that came out kind of simultaneously. They decided to publish all in one book, and um, I've started already. Uh, and I am not necessarily that thrilled to be back in Mare's head because obviously it's fresh from the events of Red Queen, and for those of you who've heard my little tirade, it's still those same four things <laughs> over and over again in our head. So I'm interested to see if it ever goes away from that, um, and so we will see what shall happen to our Red Queen. So I have a book that I won in an auction, and that is The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. It is Ooh. special because the author oh, did hey. this to the cover. Uh, I read The Diabolic last year, and I really loved it. A diabolic is basically a human-type robot that is created in order to protect a specific being and in the book the diabolic named nemesis is set to protect one of the uh important political daughters named sidonia and in order to do so she takes sidonia's place when sidonia is invited to go to the empire's seat and uh interact with people there which is a dangerous thing obviously because anything could happen and a lot of hijinks ensue it was a lot of like twists and turns and i'm I was really into it, and I'm super excited for the sequel as well, which is coming out in... Oh, it's coming out this month, actually, at the end Great. of this month. Yay! When Alexa was able to uh, g go to that booktuber panel with yeah, some really cool know. folks, so... Um, so uh, Michael Bookline was there, and... Emma from Emma, Emma, Emma from Emma Books. Monica. And Monica. And Kristen. And Kristen, super space chick. Um, some of the giveaways, and the, uh, some of the giveaways uh, were kind of on the table, and then when we saw, well, she saw I had to, I'm, that this I need was it. completely un, and I wanted it too for for one for one reason that will be obvious very soon. We were like, we have to grab this, so we now own a physical copy. Yeah, it, you have to tap on it because it is that like it's a huge book of Lord now we're of Shadows. Only Lady Midnight. It even has an ex exclusive deleted scene. Now I'm hesitant to buying Lady Midnight. Like, I don't mind this because it's like free. I'll grab that. But in actually collecting the series, it would be nice to have the thing. Because he wants our... the pretty version. Well, we will know that it, it sort of is the pretty version-ish already because it looks like you know all the other books. But um, we'll see. So uh, I highly. Anyway, I've talked enough about. Uh, I attended the signing the day before that panel, you know, where we got that book, and there were four authors at that signing, and I may have gone slightly overboard. Uh, in my defense, they're all 
really good books. Uh, first is Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco, which is the sequel to Stalking Jack the Ripper. And I love this one even more than the first one. The mythology in it is so good because obviously she goes to Romania and the whole like exploration into vampire lore. Is it like Dracula himself? Like a young Dracula? Or no, is it, no, no, not Or is not it like Dracula's kid because um, Prince Dracula? It's basically Dracula. like... If Vlad you were Dracul. gonna throw Nancy Drew into a historical setting and someone is setting up murders to look like it's Dracula, but it's not. It's like so good. I just loved it so much and I'm so excited for the next one. Um, next is The Reader, which is the first book of the Sea of Ink and Gold series by Tracy Chi. And this is set in a world where books don't exist. Hey. And they don't know what books are. That's terrible. Uh, but the way she sold it to me was she was talking about it like it was pirates, but in the Old West, which I think is amazing. Let's make some robbers. This Sorry, one, uh, just... part of the reason I picked it up is because the author is Filipino, which I think is really cool. Uh, it's The Bone Witch by Rin Chapeco, and this is the first in the series. And it is about a girl who discovers that she has the power to raise the dead. And so Sweet. she goes into training as a bone witch or an Asha. And it's good, like I've read it already. The storytelling style is very interesting and unique because it's almost like she's telling someone else her story and that person is just like putting it to paper. I'm really excited for the next one because it sounds like it's gonna be really good. And I like the lore in this one. I think it was just because there was a lot of setup which is why I thought it was a bit slow, but definitely looking forward to reading the sequel now. And we have Mask of Shadows by Lindsay Miller. I actually talked about this one in our first September, what we read. This book is about Sal with Leon, and Sal is participating in a competition to become an assassin that is part of the Queen's Hand, which is Queen's Left Hand, I think, which is an exclusive uh, group of assassins, obviously assigned to do whatever dirty work the Queen requires. Uh, Sal actually has ulterior motives because there is a revenge plot hidden in under like under the whole competition storyline so i'm looking forward to the next one because i thought this one was really fun it's a very fantasy light story so anyone who's new to fantasy is probably going to actually really like enjoy this one so yeah definitely check it out running up the rest of my library halls so encyclopedia brown oh um i don't this is probably like middle grade like sleuthing or Detectiving. I just want to see if this is actually really. If this came from. This came as a recommendation uh, from one of uh, for, for, from some of the comments where if you want like that middle grade kind of like detective stuff, which we sort of maybe wanted to do like a thing on, this yeah. might be a good place to start. So we'll see. It's pretty thin, so it should be done in less than an afternoon. So we'll see what that looks like. Uh, on the other hand, I also have Stormbreaker by Alex Wright. I've always wanted to uh, read the Alex Ryder series um, by Anthony Horowitz. And, um, I've been curious about that series. It's 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 kind of like you know teen James Bond type yeah. deal, uh, and I am just interested in how that's played out. I mean, so many books have come out, um, and I just kind of want to know what, what that is. Also, uh, I had finally finished Novice. I'm gonna review that in our uh, what's, what's it called? I'm gonna review that well, in our our in our, in, our re, in our recap, and I just couldn't put it down. It was really really good. Um, blasted through the first book, and and so now I have to read. The Inquisition and Battle Mage. So I it's love a the cover. really, really good book. I am, you know, I, I don't like elves and dwarves. Like, in, yeah, I mean, it's just me. Like, it's like I, me and fairies. Yeah, you know what I mean. But but for some reason, this book makes those two things work for me. Oh, and I've that's like nice. like Aragon makes elves work as well, uh, and dwarves. So, but I actually nice find thing. this to be more enjoyable than Aragon, actually. Um, oh. uh, in, in that sense. Oh, high praise there. Uh, yeah. Although instead of dragons, it's demons. So, There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong at all, so go go check it out. It's a really good series. And now we've come to the portion of this video where Alexa is going to show you how insane she is. <laughs> uh, okay, so I do not have just one copy of this book. I actually have two. This is Before She Ignites by Jodie Meadows, and it is the first in her new series, The Fallen Isles Trilogy. It's about a girl named Mira who discovers a politically explosive secret, and she tries to go to the right people to get this fix, only ends up getting thrown into jail. And so Mira has to come to terms with what she believes she needs to do to right this wrong, and also uh, to discover that she's actually a lot stronger than she thought she was. So this is the regular edition, and I picked this up at a signing at Books of Wonder. And this is the Alcrate edition, which is gold, as you can see, so Ooh. special. And <laughs> so I don't have just one or two copies of this book. I have three copies of Warcross by Marie Lu. In my defense, one of them was sent to me, and I'm giving it to one of my friends, so. But 
Um, yeah, so Warcross, obviously one of my favorite books that I've read this year. So good, Mackie's read it, uh, my friend. I've actually been telling All of my friends have read it because I'm currently in She's totally dressing up as Emika for Comic-Con in a few um, days. It is about Emika Chen who is a bounty hunter and that is how she makes her living. And one day she hacks into and gets discovered by everyone in the game, uh, the Warcross opening game ceremony. And she ends up getting hired by the creator of Warcross, which is like this virtual reality thing by the way. Uh, to uh, to be a player in the championships because someone is trying to mess up with War mess up Warcross and he wants her to figure out who it is and it's so good I just love it so much uh, the only reason I have this other one <laughs> is because um, I'm I'm a sucker apparently and like oh hey look at that <laughs> I love <it. laughs> just a squeal oh I love it so much that's why so Fair. yeah uh, I loved Warcross I'm super excited for the sequel. Cannot wait. For those of you who watch our ice cream tag, I still want to grind that up and put it on my ice cream. And, and now we really get to the portion of this is how you, how you know Alexis is an insane fan girl. So, regular Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass, right? And then you have the Barnes and Noble special edition, which has has a uh, it has a couple of pages from Sarah's writing notebook of when she was writing Tower of Dawn. Mm -hmm. So you see a little bit of like what she put in and what she didn't. And then. We have the Target edition of it, which, which has, has um, art. Only a Target, it has art. It has art here. Um, this is Kale and Nezrin. Hold on. Ta da. And um, it also has. Uh, spoilers. Spoilers. No, it's not. Manon and Aelin. That's not really a spoiler. And I'm pretty sure this has a key. Yeah, there is a QA with Sarah in this one as well. So that's the Target edition. And then there is the Books a Million edition, which has this amazing poster on the back. Wow. And I also have the UK edition. Can you tell I really love this book? This one actually has art in it, by the way. So do you like this book, Lex? Yeah, I think so. Just a little. I think she likes um, it. I actually reviewed it in our first What We Read for September. It was so good. And yes, I'm slightly biased because I freaking love Kale Westfall. He is my favorite male character in the series. But it's not just that, it's the fact that she was able to make the world grow. It was the fact that she was able to give us even more characters to fall in love with. It was just so good. I just so I like I'm so traumatized by the thought that next year is the last book in the series. I just Aww. <gasps> cannot. And there will be multiple editions of that one, so not gonna be fun. I'm trying to get him to read it. The Back comforting her begins now. Watch <laughs> Anyway. Now you that you've comforted? seen, yes I do. Okay. Now that you've seen the extent of how insane I get when I find girl over books, we can end this video. So there you have it. Though I just said there you have it. There you have it. All of you. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's not what I meant. Ye who be watching this here yon video. We are um, done with this one's book. We better be. As you can see, I totally broke um, the uh, not buying any book streak. But in my defense, there were a lot of good books that came out. Anyway, if you are interested in any of these books or if you have thoughts on any of them, please, please leave them in the comments down below. We love hearing what you guys have to think about all the books that we talk about. Especially when we get you guys to add books to your TBR. That's the greatest. Suffer with us or enjoy it. Uh, other way. things, what other things? Uh, Tamara Pierce video will be coming up. We have the schedule hammered out, so we are definitely going to be sharing that with you guys. And don't worry, we have laid it out so that the worlds are separated, everything is in order. And there's going to be like a chronological piece yeah. there too, so if you want to read We're it very timeline excited, wise. guys. Very yeah. excited. Um, what else? Oh, candles. If you haven't seen the candle video yet, I will link to that down below. Uh, I will also put the information so that you guys can order your own candles and get a discount. In which I sniff all of the candles in that video. And get hungry. Get really like, just, I, I still have, I still want to eat though, by the way, like I still need like food. So yeah, uh, if you want to find us on other social media, all of that is down below as well. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye.